Last month we had a customer run up against the upload size limit imposed by Cloudflare and they asked us to find a solution as quick as possible to get them moving again while we're looking at a more um, robust permanent solution. Okay, so I'm going to elaborate on our thought process and the customer's situation because if you're watching this looking to bypass or overcome this limitation, then it's likely you have some of the same factors that make increasing the limit the least friction approach. On the Cloudflare dashboard I'm signed into now, this is the DNS page. I have set up bug test as a subdomain uh, and that's pointing to our origin server IP address and the Cloudflare proxy is on. There is no need to turn this off to bypass the 100 megabyte limit. You can leave the proxy on. Going down to the uh, network page, um, there's this setting maximum upload size, which you can see for us is 100 megabytes because we are on a free plan. The enterprise plan goes up to 500 megabytes. It may be negotiable, but reading the documentation and the help section, there's no language in here that suggests that you can go beyond this 500 megabytes. So for our customer, upgrading to the enterprise plan, even just temporarily, and then trying to work with Cloudflare support to increase this limit, didn't guarantee a solution and may have just wasted a lot of time. Aside from not guaranteeing a solution to this time sensitive issue, it would have involved an ongoing cost of at least $5,000 a month and we could much cheaper build a permanent solution for less than that um, with, that would work within the limitations of the free plan, no ongoing cost and no platform lock-in. Being a time sensitive matter, we needed to do something to get a temporary solution as soon as possible while we could work on a permanent file upload solution such as chunking the request into multiple HTTP requests um, or adding another uh, subdomain that's specifically for uploading um, or adding some middleware to the server, any number of other solutions. Okay, um, We just needed to do something as soon as possible right there and then, while we then work on a permanent option, permanent solution. Turning off the Cloudflare proxy in the short term could have been done, but it wasn't necessarily the fastest solution because our customer's backend was split across multiple origin servers. All of those servers were hardened to only accept connections from the Cloudflare IPs, and they were all using the Cloudflare origin SSL certificates. So it would have been about a day's delay to carry out all the necessary reconfiguration and that would have also put them in a vulnerable situation whilst our devs are making the permanent solution for the file uploads. So if possible, we wanted to avoid turning off the Cloudflare proxy. While I was going through the customer's application, both the client side web interface and also the server side endpoints that receive the API requests, I noticed that Cloudflare wasn't enforcing the 100 megabyte limit comprehensively. If you were trying to upload a file that's larger than 100 megabytes, then Cloudflare shows you a user-friendly error page and it's got a status of, I think it's 417 entity too large. I think that's the error. Um, now, from a developer's point of view, if I was working for Cloudflare and had to implement a maximum upload size, then I would first check the most performant way, which is to look at the, the sender's HTTP request and see if the content length header is above 100 megabytes. And then you would just void the output of that uh, re re uh, request. And then when it finishes sending, you just return the error page. Um, but, you know, as an, a, a developer, if I was working for Cloudflare, I couldn't, uh, you know, rely on that completely because the content length header could be manipulated or they could just remove the content length header from the request completely. So there's no way to, to judge that, how big that request is without actually measuring it coming in. Although I would expect these to be things Cloudflare have considered and are handling on their end, 
I can't just assume that. I have to check because the easiest workaround would be to just manipulate the content length header to bypass the limit, or even better, just get rid of the content length header from the request and pretty much any server like Nginx, Apache, they will automatically deal with the absence of a content length header. The crazy thing is you can. You can just remove the content length header and Cloudflare will let you upload files that far exceed even the 500 megabyte enterprise upload size limit. As mentioned, HTTP servers like Apache, Nginx, Node.js, anything else, they will automatically deal with the absence of a content length header because this is actually quite common. I've I've never thought to quantify it, but if I were to, um, I would imagine that a majority or close to a majority of the HTTP requests that your browser receives on day-to-day -day web browsing use don't have a content length header. Um, if you consider the, the separation of concerns between the HTTP server and the application that's uh, running on your server, like uh, for example, Apache or Nginx, these would be the HTTP server, and the application would be something like that runs in PHP, for example, like WordPress. The HTTP server doesn't know how big the response payload is going to be. So it doesn't send a content length header in its reply. Instead, it uses content um, uh, transfer encoding chunked as uh, to indicate a variable length of response. Um, so in conclusion, in exploring possible short-term temporary solutions, um, we found that we should just bypass this limit by not sending a content length header and we don't have to touch anything on the server side because cloud uh, the, the server end like which runs in Apache it'll automatically deal with the absence of a content length header we don't need to make any changes in Cloudflare because we are simply bypassing this 100 megabyte limit we can leave the proxy turned on so that solves our infrastructure side server side of configuration issues as all we had to do was modify the JavaScript in the specific pages of their web interface um, that prevents the browser from sending a content length header. Let's move on to the proof of concept. So I'm going to show you this in two ways. One's from curl in the terminal, which is to demonstrate how you might change your application that needs to communicate with a, uh, a server behind Cloudflare. And secondly, I'll demonstrate this through the browser in Chrome, which was the challenge we faced with our client. Uh, in the browser, you don't really have much control as easily, uh, but it's still possible. More difficult, uh, but possible. Um, so to start with, we need to create a test file that we can upload, which is larger than um, 500 megabytes to, to demonstrate that you can exceed the enterprise limit as well. So I'm going to copy this command, which will create a file in my um, home directory, which you can see here, I've just created one. It's uh, 576 megabytes. Uh, and then I'm going to upload that in curl. So we're going to copy and paste this command. There we go. It's running. Um, you'll see here that we have connected to a Cloudflare IP to show you this is being proxied through Cloudflare. The key header in this curl request is the content um, is transfer encoding chunked as opposed to content length with the number of bytes that the file is. Um, while we're waiting for this to upload, it shouldn't take too long, it's going pretty fast. Um, I'll show you the, the server. So um, this is uploading to index.php on our on my testing environment. Um, and it's, it's just a simple uh, PHP script that hashes the file. So we're going to produce a hash. 
you'll see here we've just got a signal saying uh, we are completely completely uploaded and fine. And you would have noticed that this little uh, terminal here, which is showing the network activity on the server, it didn't start showing a high download rate until the upload already finished. This is actually a room for improvement by Cloudflare because they are wasting a lot of time uh, waiting for the request to be fully uh, buffered into their server before transmitting it to the, to the, um, the origin server. So I think there's a lot of room for improvement for them. They should be um, streaming it to the server, I think. Okay, so we've just finished uploading and we've got a hash. There's the hash right there, MD5. I'm gonna MD5 that same file on my computer as well. So you uh, rand.blob, there we go. So the hash matches. That means uh, this proves that the file was uploaded with complete integrity. It wasn't just chopped off at 100 megabytes. Um, the next uh, one I will show you now is the browser request, which um, I'll have to open that up now, HTTPS and slash uh, index.html. So this is where I'm running my uh, test in the browser. Let's refresh that so we can check the IP. So there we are, that's the Cloudflare IP we're getting. Let's go to the console where, we'll see, where we will see the uh, hash being produced. Let's upload that now. Check on the upload speed. Okay, so it seems to be moving along pretty fast. We shouldn't uh, have to wait too long for this. Um, once the upload finishes, uh, well, the, the upload speed seems to have crashed. So let me just show you now, okay? So the key information to, to look at here is that, um, is this readable? We're giving it, a readable object for the uh, the body of the request rather than giving it the whole file to begin with like you would uh, typically do in, in fetch. So this is the this uh, demo here gives you the the essence of what you need to do to make to omit the content length header from your request. Um, in the browser you don't have absolute control over how a HTTP request is formed. You can't just, you know, tell it don't send a content length header. You can't just tell it to use chunked encoding. It doesn't work like that. Um, with the fetch API or the HTTP request uh, API in the browser, um, the the way you, you do this is you have to, the way you make it um, use transfer encoding chunked is by creating a transform stream where you have a readable and a writable you give the readable end to the fetch which is going to be um, reading the body and sending it to the uh, server uh, to, to the HTTP request and um, here we are getting the file stream reader and we are writing the chunks of the file to the writer end which comes out here in the readable end and there we go. So um, pretty much that, that's all it comes down to. And we can see here that the HTTP request has finished and produced a hash. That ma hash matches. So there I've proved that you can bypass the limit in the browser 